Hey, Art. Mark! Sorry, I, I thought you were someone else. Just leave your suit and I'll have it fixed by morning. I, I actually came to talk, but if you're busy, I can... What's on your mind? Well, um... Ah, I see. <laughs> Girl trouble. That obvious, huh? It's all over your face, kid. Pull up a chair. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is Panels of Pixels podcast, and we're currently covering Invincible Season 2. And this episode, we're covering Invincible Season 2, Episode 6. It's not that simple, is the, the uh, title of the episode. So uh, the synopsis, Jamie. After two challenging missions, the Guardians of the Globe struggle to work as a team. Meanwhile, Mark tries to balance his hero duties, personal relationships, and his future as a college student. Sounds like everybody in this world at this point. Right? <laughs> everybody has their own things that they're challenged with. But uh, with Mark's situation at this point, he's dealing with being a superhero and his father, who's an asshole, and left Not him becoming his father. And and also leaving him with a uh, stepbrother <laughs> who's purple <laughs> and uh, having to deal with uh, all, all the other issues with uh, Martian at this point, too. Your initial thoughts. What, what were your initial thoughts of this particular episode? I really liked it. There, I mean, as usual, there was a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Lots of character development. Lots and lots. Uh, there's only, what, two more episodes? How are they going to wrap this up? They seem to do well with the writing, and it it seems like now with any shorter shows that are out there, like, or miniseries, or, like, even, like, seasons, half seasons, they're wrapping up and they're giving us more. This episode was about 50 minutes long, almost an hour, but they were able to do a lot within the writing to actually get us there, which I really did enjoy. My thoughts about it. I really did enjoy the episode. They did clear up a lot of few things that were there and then threw in nuanced issues within people like Immortus, Donald, yeah. and um, Rick. Um, Rick is the robot, right? Or No, the boyfriend of William who is... Oh, yeah. Who is uh, not feeling his... <laughs> Not sure about life and what's worth living in or how to live life after being dead. Yeah, yeah. And then Angstrom at the very end, too. They We, we get a little yeah. bit of a tease about Angstrom, too, at the very end, which is very odd. Yeah, we haven't seen. I mean, let's just talk about him because that's an easy thing to quick talk about. Yeah. You know, he was a big part of the beginning of the season mm-hmm. and then disappeared. Yes. Later. <laughs> and now he's back. And he's got a suit. <laughs> yeah. A well-tailored suit on that weird neck. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I almost forgot about him. I almost pushed him off to season three. And now I'm like, well, but wait, how are we dealing with all of this right now? We have so many storylines going on right it, now. It's like the long story. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the twins. Remember the twins? Yep. We, we never got them. I, I wanted to bring this up last time we podcasted and about the last episode i'm like wait we didn't even get the twins what's going on the Mueller twins what happened (laughs) and and we never got anything out of it so i'm surprised i I wouldn't be surprised that come the end of the season we get the Mueller twins and then angstrom comes in again because i i think they're going to salt and pepper angstrom in because they still have to deal with this whole uh mark dealing with the guardians his feelings for eve because we do get that within this episode too everybody you know obviously this is spoiler everybody and it's already been notated so but the thing is is that he's dealing with his issues with amber throughout the episode and there's this whole conversation which is really cool because you see it between um eve 
and I'm forgetting who else, and then Amber and somebody else as well. Or it was Mark and and uh, it was Mark and Art, uh, the, cost, okay. the costume guy. Okay, and then on top of that, then uh, you had Amber talking to somebody else as well, and it was like, wow! And the the conversations coincided. The way uh, they did that was gorgeous. It was amazing within the conversation because you could see the correlation within it of how yeah. they both feel. And the writers were very good with this. It exactly. was so good. Neither one of them wants to give up on the relationship, but it's also not fair. Yeah. I mean, mostly to Amber, but Mark realizes this. Yeah. And it, doesn't it, 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 it's doesn't want to be his dad. He well, knows exactly because, how Amber feels. Yeah, because Nolan never had to deal with this whole dichotomy of these issues of being a super and what he was as a Vultramite, what he was doing on Earth. And then with Mark and his do I mean, getting, he should have dealt with those issues. And it seemed like it did. I mean, now it's seeming like it did affect him more than he let on at the end when he left Earth. Yes. And now he has another child, which Debbie is dealing with. And oh, my God, Debbie. Oh, I love for the she fact is a how saint. she's embracing this whole thing with this kid. And it's amazing. And I love her for it. And I love that character more so. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. she's yeah. amazing. Once a mom. Oh, like she is the best mom ever. And she's doing it in spite of Nolan. Yeah. For Mark. And I mean, she is chewing this kid's food for him. For him. <laughs> like, well, oh, my God. Like a bird. You chew your food, you spit it into the kid's mouth, and then they eat it. Yeah, because they don't have the enzymes. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, and it's wild. But the fact is, is that she's showing love for this kid, too. So, in in a sense, she's adopting this child. And just like Mark is her own child, she's adopting Oliver. (laughs) Because she has, I mean, she would have every right to give him to Cecil. Every right. Every right, but the thing is, she doesn't want to for the fact that Mark has an attachment to his brother. Yeah. And and she loves her son, and she wants her son to be happy. And oh, I dude, th- when, when Mark I th- came home and yeah. Oliver was like, bra, 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 <laughs> bra, oh, bra. <laughs> it's like, he knows right away, that's my brother. And yeah. it's like, oh. But the fact this is also... Calling- Debbie part- Mama. Yep. Yeah. And all those things. And it, it's amazing. And I just love for the fact that, you know, even though Debbie has this anger and hatred towards Nolan, she will care for this child, mm-hmm. knowing that it's Nolan's other child from another woman or an alien at that, too, and is taking him in as her own. And that's... But how smart is it to have the nannies come visit to see the purple child? That was my only... That was a weird thing. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that, too. Especially when you got the one person that says, yeah, I was sent by Cecil. And... Well, I, I mean, I can see the reason... I can see her reasoning for picking that person. Because mm. the person was flat out honest. Like, yeah, he sent me, but fuck him. <laughs> Which could be a game. Mm-hmm. Could be a game. Could be a play. And it worked, but she's also got a resume of dealing with special kids. For those who can't see me, I did the air quotes for special. Um, Uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) So I can see why she picked her. Yeah. Cecil was going to get, even if she picked someone who was not on Cecil's payroll, Cecil was going to weasel his way into that person. So at least this way. There was honesty within this person, in my opinion. And I, I think that showed just exactly how these people are and they they wanted to help her genuinely regardless of cecil you know i'm pretty sure they you know the nanny was like well fuck cecil he's an asshole (laughs) the first one the one that she said you're a plant i know a plant when i see one do we think she was actually from cecil no i didn't think so which is why the person sees little blue purple no little purple Oliver running around like, do you not report that for child <laughs> abuse? <laughs> I mean, I know they live in a world where there's superheroes, but yeah, it still feels a little weird. 
Yeah, you would think that woman would actually report her going, hey, she dipped her child in beet juice and made him purple. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, you know, and the, the fact is, like, she had to go through that whole thing of these steps, and, you know, then she finally gets uh, the nanny that she needs, which is good. And yeah, she, honestly, needs, she needs help. It's, I mean, she needs the help, yeah. Even if you're not working. And is she still working? We don't know. I think she is. I think so, too. Yeah, which is blowing my mind. <laughs> A lot of work from home, probably. Who knows? But um, I I find it interesting in the very beginning of the episode that we start off where we left off. As we should have, because we left on a giant cliffhanger like 66 Batman, like I said. Yeah, exactly. We needed and to come back to last time on. Last time on. And unfortunately, we, we get Rex getting hit in the head. Dude. Oh, my God. You, you think right away he did. Yeah, I thought that <laughs> whole crew was gone. I thought so, too. And I mean, they basically were two of them barely made it out. Correct. Barely. Yeah. I, and that, I mean, and the fact that Rex made it at all is it, completely impressive. Uh, completely. Yeah, that was impressive. And the fact that we, we do find out later, spoilers, everybody. Yes. Spoiler full. And we're going to say it. Rex did survive. He got shot in the freaking head. <laughs> and lost an arm and some chunks of body. And yeah. Oh my god, and still retain what Rex is usually <laughs> because Rex and, his attitude, yeah. his personality. <laughs> like just stood up. He's like, Of course I'm okay. Why would you say that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then in the hospital, hmm. he was like, you know, I feel kind of bad about how I treated women. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was like a rude awakening. He needed that shot in the head to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys need to do that. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys out there. <laughs> I'll say it. I'll admit it. Sometimes you need a knock in the head. <laughs> eh, girls, too. Eh, well, that is true. But the theoretical knock in the head, not actual. Knock the exactly. Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's theoretical. It's like. Uh, uh, an epiphany. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a lot of guys Nobody need needs that. to actually be hit in the head. A, a, well, some guys, yes. Women, no. <laughs> uh, I, I will play that advocate. So it's like, yeah, guys need to be literally shocked to the head. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull my man card at this point. And, uh, but we also found out his adorableness of loving interior design. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is magazines. Magazines, because the internet's boring. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no interior design on the internet. Yeah. It's like, okay, th there's something about Rex that is more regular within people's lives, but interesting facts and unknown facts about Rex <laughs> that we get. <laughs> yeah. I, I really love it. Uh, it. It humanizes him. Yeah. And that's what it is. And I really do enjoy that. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I love how Mark actually visited Rex. And, you know, he was missing his hand and he's feeling very sorry for how he treated women and everything. And even with Eve himself, he actually talks about how bad he treated Eve. So yeah. it, it it basically humanizes Rex. And I, I think that's literally a, a strong point within this episode. So I, I think within Mark and Eve, Rex is there as a good yeah, person. I, I think so. Rex, Rex is going to be more of a team player. Yeah. You know, we got to figure out if Immortal is going to get his head back in the game or not. Well, that's the whole problem. He lost somebody within this, too. Yeah. And, and he hasn't dealt with that feeling before no he has and the not. first time you deal with that not that it ever gets easier no it doesn't but the first time is by far the worst yeah and immortus is immortal as we all know but the thing is he's also died but came back <laughs> as we all know yeah 
But the thing is, is that he has never faced mortality at this point and falling in love or being in love with somebody and then uh, losing that person and then having to deal with that in the aftermath. And then living a life outside of that, too, which sucks. It's, yeah. It does suck. Um, the one thing I would like to talk about is uh, Rex is not completely dead, but he winds up killing Lizard King. Yeah. <laughs> Badass Rex. I mean, he was a, he was an animal. Darn that. Oh, my God. It was like total redemption at that point. He he just like basically stood up for himself and everybody else at that point. And I just was so glad to see that. So visceral and everything. It, it was really good. It was so good. Yeah. And nice and gory too. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Visceral. We always have to have the gory scene. <laughs> it's got to be gory. It's got to be what it is. So that's why this is animated, everybody. <laughs> and those of you who actually listen to our Akira podcast with Lara and Rob and I. Wow. Go listen to it because Akira was the start of all this. And I'm starting to see uh, a lot of the traits of how uh, I like to call Japan animation or Japanese animation yeah. integrated within what's currently now the standard, not only for uh, Japanese animation, but also regular animation. You know, you get that through DC as well. And with this through Amazon Prime, when we, we talk about Invincible. So uh, I'm, I'm just glad that we get this kind of adult based animated series. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, what? Who, who watches animation as adults? Well, we do. Lots of people. They have been forever. We have. Since the Simpsons. Well, yeah, technically. Rick and Morty. Family Guy. And, Family Guy. Yeah. Uh, Bob's Burgers. I mean, I can keep going and going. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that the the, the fact of the violence and everything, uh, that was more of a Japanese animation thing, not until the mid to late oh, 80s. Yeah. And uh, I, I try to bring it up. I tried to look for the actual episode or the movie that I watched that I brought up on um when we talked about Akira, I can't remember it and I can't find it. <laughs> I was like, where is oh, that no. movie? I, I could not remember it. I remember it because I was like 11 or 12 at the time when it came out and it was very brutal. And I remember my father at the time saying, can he watch this? <laughs> and I was, but mind you, you had Voltron and Voltron was cutting monsters in half and everything else. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Japanese animation was very much a, a factor and influence into what we have now today. Uh, and also, even with the Japanese animation, like a lot of the shows hit on some heavy stuff, just like this show does. It's not just violence and gore. There's some heavy emotional stuff in it. I mean, well, storylines and, and plot yeah. based uh, about re reality it could be rape. It could be abuse. It could be. Uh, relationship a lot of things that are very uh you know we already know this based upon nolan and and mark with their relationship and then mark uh nolan and debbie at that too so it, it's very construed and really really hard to really decipher but it's one of those things that you you go through it and then you look at it and you're like, oh, I want to know more. I want to see how they get through this. I want to see how it all gets resolved or how do they survive? And, you know, it, it's kind of dramatic. And I, I really do enjoy this about the, uh, the show itself, too, because you really care for the characters. Yeah. Eve, Mark, Nolan, Debbie. Hell, even Cecil or Rex. I was gonna say, even <laughs> Immortal at this point. <laughs> and Donald. I'll be dead. On, and I completely, completely forgot about Rick until he shows up. Like, I had to look back. I'm like, wait, who was he? I was like, oh, yeah. That guy. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's amazing uh, what they could do within a, an animated show and the story. And, and it's a credit to the the comic itself, which this is based upon everybody. Yes, 
We are Panels to Pixels. This is a podcast about, you know, a comic turn to a, a show or an animated show at this point. And it's amazing at what we get uh, from from what they do within it. And it, it and it's a credit to the, the storytelling and the writing, you know, and I'm not like trying to um, kiss Robert Kirkman's ass and I'm not in any way relation, related to him. But Despite your this, last name. Yeah, except for my last name. That's the only thing. Uh, I'm sure I'll get a message from him going saying, hey, stop talking about me in the third person. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> honestly, I, I do enjoy this. And it is, it's a credit to the actual original story. Now, mind you, if you get the omnibuses, forget it. You're going to be there for days because these things are huge and thick. <laughs> There's like two or three of them, the compendiums that are out there. So. If you're out there reading and following along, it's great. But let, let, let's talk about uh, another character who we all love. Alan the Alien. Yay! Yay! <laughs> we love He's Alan. He's still adorable, even I love as Alan. a giant beefcake. <laughs> yes, yes. And the fact that he tries to talk to Immortus and he was in Immortus's mind... Mortis was ready to kill him. And then Mark comes out of nowhere and they have this conversation, Mark and, and Alan, and he goes, uh, it's only one way, dude. <laughs> and he had to talk. To oh, dude, when he starts interpreting <laughs> or passing the message along, I'm the king of space. And then making fun of the beard. Yep. Like, all the best parts of the beard. You're missing all the best parts of the beard. <laughs> oh my god i lost it i lost it that'd be these parts <laughs> yeah uh, i i just oh. love it uh seth rogan is perfect as alan the alien oh he is brilliant and i just love the character itself it, it's a comedic twist but also fully heartfelt in the character itself and i i just love it and i'm glad that we did not lose him <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, can you just tell me where you live? That would make things easier. Yeah, just he tell me where you live. Yeah, he he, he is the uh, comedic relief that we do need, but also yeah, it the, used to be William, but they've kind of knocked William out of that. Toned, he hasn't had a good. They toned him down a bit, and yeah, they kind of like influenced and give more of Alan into that. Uh, I'm hoping that we do get more William later on. I'm yeah, sure William, that will happen. He's still sweet and oblivious and happy and doofy and has a good heart, but he he used to be funnier. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Uh, the only thing it could bring up would be, well, the funeral sucked. Oof. That yeah. sucked bad. And you can tell how uh, Mortis was upset about kate's death and that it, might have been the first time he cried too based on how like well that it one shows tear. His, yeah it shows his humanity of uh regardless of his immortality and i think that's really right. what needed to be done for the fact that he is a a, a person that that feels and expresses but i think at this point he started to really uh, embrace the idea of mortality in his life from people, you know. And like just before that, like the hospital scene with that, um, the song Dream Team mm. by Aiden Knight. Oh my god, that was the music in the show is always spot on. Mm -hmm. And that was, and that was the start of you seeing him more human. Just with all, it was just heartbreaking watching Immortal and everyone else just seeing what happened. Because the guys in space came out pretty much unscathed. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had it rough. They had a real rough time, but they worked really to get well together as a team. The other team just got killed, literally. Well, on top of that, it was the fact that the, um, I'm forgetting what they are called, the Squidums. <laughs> sequids sequids there we go uh they take over for 
uh, Adam Eve. Yeah, and, Adam and Eve and Robot. Yes, is that the other one. Yes, I'm like that was the very beginning. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that they take over their their like well, Robot's human physi- well, yeah. physicality, his young self, the the robot that we know, and uh, and then they wind up actually stopping the sequins at that point which was great but the thing is is that and and on top of that they had to deal with the martians at the end and and the martians were were real assholes about it oh my god and dude we so the martians were assholes yeah but (laughs) but when i mean i kind of i kind of love that we didn't have to see them like get through the martians they were just like like it was just a quick jump cut to them on the spaceship the stolen spaceship fleeing yeah and they're like well we don't have any guns and then mark's like i got this and he just becomes this for lack of a better term human because he's not fully human but a human like ballistic Bullet. yeah <laughs> it's just whoa that was cool yeah that was so cool yeah, he was like, screw this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it th- this this episode had its ups and downs, had its nuances, and I really did enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, we did get a little bit more about that. Mark actually does investigate the books of Nolan. Yep, he gets them from art. Which I'm glad to hear that Debbie's still talking with Art, so at least she's got. We know she's talking to somebody who's yeah. not Cecil. <laughs> yeah, and I thought that was really incredible, and the fact that he was able to obtain some of these books because Art was like, "Well, your father gave me these," and I thought, "Oh, whatever." I'm like, and no, no, mind you, Debbie had burned or got rid of the other books, and and thank no. God it wasn't that he left little notes in those specific ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It it was literally stories based upon Nolan's life, and if you read into it, it was very much, uh, you know, a story about the Infinity Ray with a space rider. So that was something realistic that happened to Nolan at certain points, but he put it in you know fictitious but, form. And then Alan comes in. He's like, "No, it's a space racer." Well, in the book, it's the rider, whichever version, whichever way it went. But you know, he changed yeah. it very, very little. Yeah, so he kept his real life work within the fiction that he was writing as a pseudonym, and uh, it worked out. And the story, uh, the story of Ragnar, seems to pique Mark's interest. He knows yeah. something was there within the story that reflected Nolan's real life as basically Omni Man. So he starts to realize, okay, these are stories about my dad and what he had done and what he was going through. But he wrote these throughout the years while well, he was on Earth. As what fiction. I'm also wondering is if he is putting together a team that can defeat the Viltrumites. That's what I'm thinking, too, for the fact that uh, if he's encountering these other people and he's putting them in the story, that they're able to actually uh, utilize that. And then, yeah, move like forward. He's, he's leaving the team that he needs to be rescued. Um, yeah. And we've got and then- the other. Yeah, and Mark could go out and find them. Yeah. But Mark doesn't want to leave just yet. Like, he's got a lot of Earth going to. Yeah, I know. And he's he's really attached to his brother. And But, I mean, the Viltrumites, if they're going to kill Omni-Man, they're going to come back and kill Earth. Because apparently it's Earth's fault that Omni-Man stopped being a good Viltrumite. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark's going to have to leave anyway. Yeah, but we have Alan the Alien, and he's led by a Viltrumite. That, a former uh, Viltrumite. So between yeah. Alan, him, and those books, I feel like that's what I feel like that's what we're working on is getting a dream team together. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's what we're we're aiming up and gearing up for everybody. So by the end of the season, we're going to be stuck on another. Guess what? Yeah, hanger. <laughs> and well, yet, technically, we, we had have... a cliff. We had a cliffhanger for this one too. Yeah, we did. But the thing is, I, I honestly think that's the best way to do it. Oh, and yeah. and it's kind of like the old uh, when when my mom and my dad were young and they would go to the theater, 
and you would have the shorts flash gordon conquers the universe and everything else i think they're working it out that way in the sense that it keeps us tied to our chairs doing what we're doing right now with this damn podcast <laughs> and we're just and like, i'm glad they didn't drop the whole season at once so that way you could take your time with each episode exactly and have to wait a little bit yeah i i hated that for the fact that all right uh you listeners know that i didn't complete what if when it came out during christmas and the holidays it was very hard for me with work and everything and then i wound up taking like two and a half months off i i released I think three and four. <laughs> I still have to finish off the rest. And then Steve and I still have to do uh, our overall thought of Echo when he can, gets back. Did he get back from New Zealand? I don't remember. But <laughs> I think he's stateside again. Whether he's home or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, have, but I do I believe he's stateside. <laughs> I haven't talked to Steve in a while. So, <laughs> everybody, but Rob. Frank, myself, Steve, eventually, we're all going to get back into the, the swing of things just like we are here. But, um, yeah, with what if they dropped it all a day after day after day? It's like for podcasters to do this, it's like, uh, unless you work from home and have at least two hours to three hours a day. I think I work from home. I still have a hard time. Exactly. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I. Uh, I, I was like, yeah, I couldn't keep up. And I knew that it was going to be, you know, there were going to be times in between, which is fine. We'll go back to that eventually just for fun. And I'm sure you guys will still listen in some respect. But uh, it's it's like when it comes to this, when it's weekly, it's a lot easier because we get to do like two or three days later. You guys can listen and then. Two days later, guess what? The new episode's out, and then you're all ramped up, and you you listen yeah. to us and had fun. The nice reminder of what happened last week when you get us exactly just before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I do that with other podcasts. I don't, uh, I don't listen to it until right before the next episode drops, so I have a reminder of like, oh yeah, that's what happened last week. <laughs> I, sometimes I don't even watch certain episodes like the day of. Like, um, I think uh, with the the ones that live. I missed episode four. I watched it like I was half asleep in the middle of the morning and I watched it and I was like, and I went back to bed and never went back to it until like five days later. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, good to know. And then I watched episode, you know, five and then I had to be on live with Jason and Alex. And uh, to be honest, I, I shouldn't be on live. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i honestly will say that uh, it's one of those things like oh, i didn't have my mind in the right space and it's like a live reaction so uh those will be a little bit different later on eventually uh but th there's a lot of movies that are out there that we want to get to and i'm sure rob when he comes back with uh fantasy picks movie edition who want to talk about Ghostbusters or what he didn't like about Ghostbusters after or what is it? Uh, Cold Empire, Frozen, Frozen Empire. Empire. Yeah. yeah, and I liked uh, it, but I'm not going to defend it against the people who don't. I can see why other people wouldn't like it. Okay, so I'm not going to defend, but I personally really enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure it was enjoyable. I've yet to see it, everybody. So if my personal opinion is, if you are a big fan of the franchise, you will enjoy it. Okay. If you want to be nitpicky, then you won't. Okay. Good. Good to know. <laughs> uh, also, they have these cool, awesome, you know, ghost trap uh, popcorn I went, holders. I went to Movie Tavern, not AMC, to get so I couldn't get the popcorn holder. Uh, I I bought them on AMC's uh, website. I debated doing that. I went there and guess what? There was a line, everybody. On the website? Yes. Oh, Jesus. It was a queue that you had to be on for the 23rd. We're doing this on the 25th, but I was there and it was a queue and all I wanted was two. Did so, you get one? Oh, they're ordered and they're coming my way. Yay. One I will hold for myself. One I might give away. I don't know. But the thing is, is also, I found out I bought four. 
and I can't return the other two. <laughs> I might know somebody who's willing to buy one off. I of know you. you will. I know you will. I know. I know. I, and I wouldn't do that to you, Jamie. I wouldn't charge you extra and everything. But okay. but the thing is, is that I was like so surprised. Uh, the proton packs, the backpacks, went fast. Yeah, they were gone bef- way before. But those were a hundred bucks a pop, everybody. But I don't think they had as many as those either. Yeah. And uh, honestly, uh, it, to me, it was always legacy in the fact of you had to have the trap because you love the idea of the trap. That tra- the trap pop- the trap thing is so cool. Yeah, it's so cool. So uh, I'll let you know what's going on. I might have a giveaway or what have you. So keep that in mind, listeners. If you're a fan or whatnot, uh, if not, Rob will probably like, I want one. <laughs> Even though he was like, dude, they were like 40 bucks. But they're life size. Yes, I know, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> you keep raising your hand. <laughs> I said I know that. <laughs> but they, they're life size. They're actually life size. Yeah, and, uh, it's so cool. It, it's so cool. Uh, our friend Megan actually took a picture of her son with somebody who actually had one in the theater. Oh, I felt so bad. She was two people away from getting one yeah. at the theater. Yeah. And it's one of those things. But keep in mind, go to AMC's website. And where they have merchandise, guess what? They do have discounts later on if they have overstock. So you know within this, they will probably have overstock. And I found something that I really wanted, and I wound up buying it. It was from Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and it was a popcorn holder with a large freaking Rocket the Raccoon. We got that one in the theater. We have that one here too. Oh, you have it? That <laughs> yeah. thing is heavy. <laughs> yeah. So because we saw it, we're like, oh, Malcolm will love that. I'm like Malcolm will hurt himself with this. <laughs> yeah, that thing is heavy. I'm like, I looked at it. I'm like, but I bought it for like 15 bucks. Oh no, we paid movie theater price for it. Which was like 30 or 40 dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing was is that they put them on discount. So go to amctheaters.com and go to the merchandise. And look for anything that's discounted. You can find stuff from The Flash, Black Adam, Guardians of the Galaxy, The Marvels, a whole bunch of stuff. And then they have stuff that they didn't even have in the theaters itself. So, you know, that that's my cheap pop or plug right now for AMC. Uh, so they got away with that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put that in the show notes. But back to Invincible. All right. Oh, yeah, so- that's right. That's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was pretty cool that we we did get Nolan's information within sci-fi books. Uh, I thought it was amazing. And then Mark is reading those books now and starting to understand more about his father. Uh, Jamie already kind of like gave that information of like maybe he's building up a super team. That, yeah. And, and then that's a theory. Up. I don't know for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. And the thing is, is that Mark needs that, but also you would have incorporated within that the guardians of the globe too, as well. They, they, they would be there to help Mark as well, because he has a sense of team with these people. And I'm looking forward to more of, (laughs) of all things, Adam, Eve and Mark together, because I have a funny feeling that, relationships gonna prosper it feels like they're pushing it they are pushing it you guys let us know you you tell us in your thoughts and and your feedback it'd be amazing because i i thought it was amazing i was like oh i really want this i really want this um and we we got a little quick ending scene uh the viltrumites trying to break nolan at that point too with what he knows and what he did and why he did it. Uh, we got Clancy Brown as general Craig and he grills him about everything on earth. So we know that the Viltrumites are probably going to go or stage an attack on earth itself, meaning that Mark's going to need a super group or, you know, alliance with people. So you got Alan alien. He's going to be a friend. Then you got the, the guardians, and then whoever I don't else? know how much the Guardians 
the Guardians have been wiped out by just Omni Man before. I don't know. That is true, but they they showed a lot of resilience while Mark was gone. So I yeah, think no, I grown. think they're tough for most other things. I don't. I just don't know how much they'll be able to help against Viltrumite army. And we've got um, oh, who's Alan working with? What's the name of the guy? Oh, oh, oh you're talking about. Uh... Peter Cullen's character. I'm yeah. forgetting. Yes. Uh, like, he is going to be more helpful than the Guardians, in my opinion. <laughs> I think so, too. And it would be so amazing if we do get Peter Cullen back voicing that character and being in the midst of the uh, the fray or the uh, fight that we, we want to see. It'd be yeah. amazing. Uh, it, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. So, uh, obviously, as you listeners know, we have not read the comic. <laughs> so we're yep. watching this as it unfolds. <clears throat> and these are adaptations of the uh, the comic to animated. But uh, they do skip and they change a little things here and there. So uh, if you guys are out there and you do have any information about the comic within relation to where we are at the story, let us know in the comments. Obviously, uh, send in feedback and we'll let you know about feedback when we get to the end of the podcast but uh that's about it for me as far as overall like things that i liked enjoyed and little things that i did pick up within the episode that that just keeps me intrigued and keeps me watching jamie so uh anything else that you had the only thing we didn't talk about was how the hell did that sequid come out of Shapesmith's sink? That's a good question. Like, how did it get there? I don't feel like it's just one. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty easily gotten rid of once it's found. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like this is going to be a big problem. Now I may eat my words next week. <laughs> but... How the fuck did it get there? That might be the bigger problem. There might be more of them all around. Like, did that ship crash somewhere and they're all around? Like, what is going on? How is that in his sink? Hmm. His putrid vomit filled sink. <laughs> well, uh, Shave Smith is still a Martian, as we know. So yes. it, it can't penetrate his skin, but it can attach oh, it itself. Definitely onto him. was controlling him. He had the crazy controlled eyes. Ah. Interesting. So it kind of mutated. Something happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if living in the crazy yucky sink helped it like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle type of thing going on. <laughs> a secret of those. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Well, we'll find out more later as uh, the episodes come about. I'm pretty sure we're going to get that more or that information as uh, we continue to watch the show. Uh, like you said, uh, this is episode five, so it's either one more. No, episode six. Yeah, well, this is, oh, this is episode six. So we probably got two more. We got two more, yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised. That's going to probably be part of the cliffhanger that we're going to get on eight, if anything. And, uh, yeah, then we have to wait another freaking year. <laughs> hopefully it's only a year oh hopefully it's a year it's been like what two or three years <laughs> since <laughs> the last time it took forever to get season two i mean it did it did yeah yeah but uh you know steven young was kind of busy everybody else was busy even though they could work from home everybody well, they, I mean, yeah who knows yeah uh, every, uh we, we all have a way of recording from home <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm in a studio right now. Okay. <laughs> you're paying like uh, $150 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's totally where I'm spending my money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you're, 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 you're buying eggs and everything else that you need for your kids and your yes. boyfriend. <laughs> well, the food that you need and then paying that uh, lovely mortgage. Stupid uh, mortgage. Yes, I know. Uh all right, well, with that, we're, we're going to move on to uh, interesting quotes 
So that's the last leg of what we could talk about within uh, this particular episode of Invincible Season 2, Episode 6. So, uh, Jamie, do you have any quotes? Um, After the babysitter, April, said, I work for you, Mrs. Grayson. And uh, Oliver was like, Mama Boss, Mama Boss, Mama Boss. (laughs) Uh, Um, Let's see. Oh, and on that note, also when Cecil, when she was like, I don't know how you raise children in your lab or whatever. He's like, we paint. And Cecil was like, we paint clouds on the ceiling. <laughs> I thought that was a good, I thought that was a really good response from him. He doesn't usually have that kind of. No, no. But also it's kind of like, oh, all right, I'm trying to appeal to the kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, th- I feel like it was mostly a joke, but I, I like, I don't know. I think it was mostly it. serious at that point going, uh, yeah, we painted clouds on the ceiling for the kids <laughs> it's like and he's like him oblivious yeah but uh yeah one that i have would be from mark saying to amber saying uh I, sometimes i wish i didn't have powers and we can just be together yeah and to me that was so genuine for the fact that he just wants to be normal yeah and <laughs> i think that that literally sums up what what Mark is, he he doesn't want these things. He doesn't want the responsibility, but still, however, he is responsible for everybody and everything. And, and he feels doesn't want that- He doesn't want to be his dad, but he doesn't not want to save the world. He can't not save the world. Exactly. Uh, it's so sad. Um, one I would get, <laughs> I have is from Eve. And she goes to Rex saying, hey, these are home decorating magazines and uh, magazines for Rex. And I think it was to somebody else. Uh, I, I guess because he never really had a home before. <laughs> yeah. And that's the and it was like uh, so cute for the fact that it shows how human that Rex is. Yeah. And, and how he wants to be somewhat normal and have a normal life. And it, it humanized Rex in a sense of like, yeah, he's not talking about girls and getting with them and being corny as he usually is. But uh, I I really enjoyed that. The only other one I had that we hadn't already talked about was um, immortal. I just thought we had more time together. Mm. I feel like that's everyone at a funeral. Yeah. And that was no matter, even if you know, even if you know it's coming. Yeah. Uh, Even though if you, I, I, encountered that and i felt that recently with a friend who passed away recently and that kind of hurt me really hard um i knew his time was limited for the you know with what he had done in life uh he was a rock star and uh i i've seen him at his worst and i've seen him at his best and uh yeah him and another friend had you know, they, they're amongst the legends of rock in, in my local area. One of Twisted Sister and one of the band called Cities in the New York City area. Um, Twisted Sister would be AJ Paro and recently my friend Steve Irons or Steve Maranovich. And it, it sucks when you know what happens to people that deal with excess but they change their life yeah and then it just like all their excess catches up catches up with them and uh i i love both of them they're great they were great people um they will always be with me but the thing is is that sometimes it hits you so hard and with the mortis at this point he didn't realize you know because he's he is immortal uh, he didn't really realize mortality at that point. And not, uh, you know, I hate using Highlander terms. Who wants to live forever? And you can't. And um, a great Queen song, everybody. So uh, if you all know me, I'm a mushy gush. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do love Queen and I do love Highlander. And guess what? They're coming out with a new Highlander. I don't know oh, why. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know who's going to be in it, but they also redid the crow, and we will be talking about that at a later point. And yeah, Jamie has 
yeah, yeah. Jamie has her opinions. I have my opinions as well. So does Lara. So eventually when that movie does come out, we will be covering that. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like I'm going to spend money on that movie. Uh, I will probably go see a matinee <laughs> and then, and I'll give my opinion, my thought, and that's about it. But, uh, to move on, I have one last quote and that would be from Alan the alien. Yay. And this is a funny one. He goes, you know what a sock on a door means on my planet? It means someone is getting busy. <laughs> and then Mark's like, yeah, it means that on every freaking planet. <laughs> oh, I also love that we learned that douchebag is international. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Do oh, you I... have the, or in, intergalactic. 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 <laughs> You have those on this planet? I, I've made that reference a lot. Are you? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and Mark's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like those little things and the things that we love of Alan Alien. So, oh, man, uh, this this episode had so, so much good moments and really, really eye opening moments about characters and just heavy <clears throat> shit about rebuilding your life i mean robot we glossed over it because it was easy to gloss over but robot was having some existential crisis well so was rick is having an existential crisis donald's having an existential crisis Uh, eve is still not sure of herself yeah and i think the whole mark and amber thing yeah this is still growing within the show and this is what (laughs) <laughs> you know, I hate saying it encapsulates us to actually watch it and keep watching yeah. and wanting just to uh, keep watching and going forward to find out what happens next. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to move on. And uh, we we gave you our quotes. Uh, we didn't get any feedback, which I understand, everybody. But I, I am. I deserve this because I am the worst at writing feedback to people. Yeah, I understand. So this is my fault. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, you know, it's always out there. And for you to send your feedback. And it doesn't well, have to be this episode. It can be another episode. Or like I be said before, anything. you can just write it and say hi. Exactly. Or voicemail and say hi. Let us yeah. know you're listening. Exactly. You know, you can literally just state, uh, you know, hey, I'm here. I've been listening. I love what you guys do. Or, hey. I really don't like this part. Can you change it? Yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> you guys suck. Can you go back to the top five format instead of just recapping in oh, a weird well, order? <laughs> it's, well, this, um, we kind of evolved and changed that for the fact that yeah. a lot of people do a top five. And yeah, then, like the way we talk about it is the way you'd be talking about it with a friend, which is what exactly what we're doing. We're talking about it like friends because we are friends talking about an episode. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. that's how Rob and I wound up eventually creating what we did and the format has changed for casual talk and i just love and enjoy that idea it's like oh well we don't have to talk about it in any specific order we could just talk about a subject or or a particular character or scene and then have fun with it and And then then, go start talking about popcorn buckets and come back exactly and digress (laughs) uh we 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 all have fun with this stuff and that's the whole thing it's it's literally just us and you loving what we talk about. Wilhelm does the same thing, and uh, a few other podcasts that I know of are doing the same thing as well. So, uh, but for for you to send feedback, if you choose to do so, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which is facebook dot com forward slash or backslash panels to pixels. Uh, I normally put up an image, which I did. For this particular episode. So all you have to do is put you know your thoughts in the comments below. If you feel that you don't want to do that. And you're not into that whole thing. Or even Instagram. Which is at Panels to Pixels Podcast. You could email us at Panels to Pixels 1 at gmail.com. And that's Panels 2 is spelled out T-O. Pixels and the number 1 at gmail.com. You could type out your thoughts. We'll read them on the actual podcast and you could be part of the podcast as far as your thoughts, or you could record yourself and send that as an attachment. And you definitely will be somebody in somebody's ears and we'll play it and we'll comment on that as well. Um, The best thing you could do for us is word of mouth. 
word of mouth gets us noticed and everybody else gets to hear us. So you can tell them where you heard us and we can be found on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcast, or whatever podcast player of choice. There's Share Mark's posts so people can find us. Yeah, exactly. All you have to do is look at the show notes, but there's a ton of them. Uh, we can be found on YouTube as well. Uh, literally, it's the podcast, and I put it the image, and it's a static image, but you could hear it that way. Or as a podcast itself, all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast, and uh, just subscribe, like, and uh, ring the bell to be notified when a new episode is up, which you know I've been doing a lot lately. <laughs> I think I put out four within the past five days. So uh, you, you guys got a lot to listen to if you want to as well and uh yeah those those are the best places to uh check us out and send in feedback uh as far as comic book news there's a lot of stuff going on now lately with wolverine deadpool uh, or deadpool wolverine depending on how you want to talk about it. it it's interesting because uh apparently uh deadpool core seems to be the huge thing that they're talking about and they're missing like one character. I think it's Baby Pool. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So apparently, uh, uh, like Lady Deadpool is in there, Head Pool is in there, Dog Pool is in there, regular Deadpool. Uh, they they kind of switched out somebody for uh, for Baby Pool, which is interesting. So basically, you're gonna have the Deadpool core within the Deadpool movie. Uh, Deadpool Wolverine movie, which is pretty cool. I think that's uh, pretty cool. They they got some uh, interesting art up out there. It's on Instagram. Uh, you can find it online. All you have to do is look for and say Deadpool core, and then you can see it. And then you'll see the Marvel logo with them all in there. Headpool. I'm looking forward to because I actually do have a head pool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's animated. He works through an app. It came out about three years ago maybe four years ago i had to buy it and the thing talks to you you could set it up as an alarm clock or you know do gags and gimmicks and it's fun it's the voice of the actual actor who did the video game so oh, that's it's, cool it's not ryan reynolds but you know he, he does have that same attitude and flair so um yeah, look for that. And I'm pretty sure you're going you know, to have a hard time looking for that particular thing. But my niece hates me when I leave it on and the thing is talking when she walks in the door. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, Uncle Mark, what the hell? I was like, oh, sorry. She goes, at least you didn't leave it in the refrigerator this time. <laughs> so, but I digress. That's funny. Uh, th- there's a lot of stuff. They're talking about World War Hulk now from Marvel. They're changing a lot of uh, Avengers titles. We don't know exactly yet. So uh, I'm looking for right now. It's all uh, hearsay and rumorville. But, you know, obviously Jonathan Majors is not the big bad as Kang the Conqueror. We might get Coleman Domingo, who is a uh, part of Fear of the Walking Dead who was, uh, did he win an Oscar or an Emmy? I'm forgetting which, but. I don't remember. I, th- I want to say he was nominated for an Oscar. I don't believe he won. I don't think he won either. But the fact is, is that Coleman Domingo is an amazing actor. He is. And uh, I, I would see him perfectly as Kang, a very version of Kang. So I would love to see him as that particular character. But what they're doing with the Marvel is going to be interesting. Um, we kind of mentioned it before about the crow. The crow's mm-hmm. coming out. We already got the the, the YouTube uh, you know trailer for that. So mm-hmm. check that out and how you feel. Do you think uh, the Joker version of the crow is a good thing, mm-hmm. or do you prefer the original Brandon Lee version that I do and Lyra does? And Jamie uh, does, and Jamie does as well. So, um uh, Rob feels that the original Crow was uh, a lot of it was based and hyped on the fact that Brandon Lee died and it was the last movie. Yes, it was. But the thing was, I still think overall as a story, regardless of the comic and that the adaptation was done well, uh, if they had done the Uber version that I really would want of seen, which would have been with Jason Momoa. That would have been amazing because it literally would have been 
very similar to what Brandon Lee had done, but yeah. more psychotic because the character in the comic does lose his mind. And they were looking to go that focal parent uh, pattern within the storyline at that point. And I don't think they do that within this particular movie. So we're, we're literally just seeing uh, another Skazgad playing the crow. And it looks like uh, kind of similar to like Jared Leto's uh, Joker. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I'll still see it and we'll give our opinions and thoughts when it does come out. But we'll go from there. Uh, we're still waiting on the Spider-Man Across the Universe Part 2. Everybody, think about that. Yeah. Remember it. I love that movie. Rob and I both loved it. We covered it. It was amazing. Still waiting. It's still in production. So, But uh, with that, uh, we went all f- through all the feedback you could possibly do. But here's the part of the podcast of where can listeners hear us. Here. Yeah, that, that's right. I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, you and I still have to schedule a time. I, I'm thinking after we finish Invincible. Just keep the schedule. Yeah, that's a smart we, move. We will do Friday the 13th, part four. Yeah. And we'll do that. So that way, for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, you guys could hear myself and Jamie. And then we're going to continue on with the Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th franchise. And then we're going to do that and every other. I'm trying to get Jerry back on the game, but uh, Jerry's had some... Uh, some things going on in his personal life and uh, I'm not going to go into it, but uh, mm-hmm. I love Jerry and I miss him and yeah, I wish I him love well. Jerry too and wish him well. So, uh, and Chester and Chester. Yes. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Chester's his cat who likes to scratch his ass <laughs> <laughs> or take his seat uh, as we all know. But uh, yeah, we miss you Jerry and I'm looking to get him back in the fold of doing things more with adrenaline cinema podcast uh, so you could hear me here on Panels of Pixels podcast as always, and Adrenaline Cinema podcast or Fantasy Picks Movie Edition when Rob comes back. Same thing with Jamie; she'll be available for Adrenaline Cinema podcast. You could hear her on Watched It in the Eighties that uh, episodes that came out. I'm not sure if Damien's doing much. I've really got to get in touch. With He's him. taking a little bit of a break right now. He's been taking a bit of a break. But, yeah, he's got he has some stuff going on too. Yeah, all right. So uh, but you could check out all that stuff on PyrocoreEntertainment.com and the links are always in the uh podcast notes. So uh with that, well, that was our show, and I just want to thank Yay. everyone for listening. <laughs> and congratulations for making it this far and listening to all our ranting. I appreciate it. Yeah, same here. So thanks everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this was Panels the Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.